Good morning, folks. We've got several items to discuss here today, and we also have the return of some of our in-print physical copies of the books many of you have been asking. But first, here's the meat. Indeed, we're getting that little break in space weather activity, no flares. Only far side CMEs and the central coronal hole you see on the north is probably too small to significantly affect the solar wind. We are approaching the peak of the 5.9 month cycle, and within it, remember the 28 day rotational activity cycle still holds. That's the breather we're getting now. Expect a re-ramp up in about a week or two. But speaking of the sun, highly complex paper here on precise point positioning errors during geomagnetic storms. Even at KP7, the positioning errors jumped 50%. During a major solar storm, we should expect little precision at all from our top technologies. Heading from the sun to seismicity, folks, we are way below average production, way overdue for bigger ones. Earth takes about three magnitude six earthquakes per week over the long-term average, looking at the last several decades, and about one magnitude seven event every 20 days. We are way, way past those marks and should expect seismicity to roar back after this prolonged pressure buildup. Maybe today, maybe next week. Point is that the pressure has not been well released of late. Folks, we gotta spank Chandra here for a moment. This is the old Spitzer infrared images of Zeta Afiyuki. The new Chandra images will toggle in here as blue near the star, the faint hue of blue surrounding that central region. Now Chandra says this is a star that got ejected by its partner supernova after having fed on the accreting material and undergoing thermonuclear ignition which kicked Zeta out of the system. And that giant shock here would be from the nova gas hitting the surrounding material. Um, no. Nova ejections don't go in one direction. This is an astrosphere bow shock pointing at the galactic center and interacting with the molecular cloud around it. The excess x-rays they see are confounding them because their models suggest the x-ray glow should be in the shock wave, not near the star. And if it was a supernova ejective view, they'd be right, but it's not. The star is taking on material from around it, fortifying the shock wave and causing the star itself to have x-ray outbursts. The stellar blast is forthcoming from this one, not part of its recent past. Last but not least, folks, this paper hits on complex details of Dansgaard Oshker events, and for those who have our latest book and got to part 2b, the 1500 year cycle and the real major climate change, this is going to seem familiar. These scientists do have it in their toolbox. Two of them are observers I speak with often, and what they are discussing lets you know that modern climate change is peanuts so far. How abrupt and severe are these Dansgaard Oshker events every 1500 years? Three, five, to eight degrees of warming in only 40 years. Compare that to the one degree of warming we have now over almost 200 years. It's how you know we're dealing with peanuts now and that the Earth can get far more extreme. By the way, while our solar physics textbook, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, is already used in dozens of universities, I want to thank Dr. A, Dr. C, and Dr. T for being the first to use our new book, particularly Part 4, in addition to the portions of Part 2 we just mentioned, in upcoming 300 and 400 level elective classes this fall. You can get all our book PDFs at observerranch.podia.com, and on there is a link to where you can buy the physical copies as well. Highly recommended. Take the class before the classes even begin. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.